This year's hottest periscope telephoto sensor with a large sensor is Samsung's HP9, a 200 megapixel, 11.4 inch sensor used by Vivo and Xiaomi. The ultra flagship models this year are equipped with this sensor. Even when digitally zoomed to 8x or 10x, the image quality still holds up remarkably well. However, when it comes to the most widely used periscope telephoto sensor this year, it has to be Sony's IMX600. Whether it's the sub-brand flagships, the main brand's large and medium flagship models, or even the large and ultra-large versions of the sub-flagships, as long as the phone has any ambition for imaging and is equipped with a periscope telephoto, the sensor used is basically this one. Before this year, Omnivision's OV64B was the regular choice for periscope telephoto sensors. Ignored at its 2020 release, it rose to prominence with periscope telephoto's popularity, staying hot for four years. From entry level to flagship phones, its presence was everywhere. It truly dominated the market. It wasn't until this year that the IMX600 finally ended its reign. By 2025, you could count the new phone still using the OV64B telephoto sensor on one hand. So here's the question, is the OV64B really outdated now? What makes the IMX600 qualified to replace the OV64B? Is it better than the OV64B? In this video, we'll answer that. Both sensors are around 1 2 inch and 1 1.95 inch in size. Specs are similar, making them suitable for periscope telephoto use. The OV64B has 64 megapixels, a higher pixel count, but that doesn't necessarily mean better image quality. The IMX600 has 50 megapixels, and when you do the math, its individual pixel size is 0.8 microns, which is just a bit larger. By the way, Sony's IMX882 and LYT600 are essentially the same sensor. It's just a different batch, different supply channels, and different names, but the technical specs are identical. So here, we'll directly include the IMX882 in the comparison with the LYT600. To avoid any brand bias affecting our judgment, we've selected four devices for an anonymous comparison. We'll label them as A, B, C, and D for everyone. A and B both use the OV64B sensor, while C and D use the LYT600. I've compiled the relevant specs for these four flagship level devices here. B and C are from the same brand and are two generations of the same product series. One is from last year and the other from this year. Apart from the difference in chips and a generational gap in ISP, their focal lengths, apertures, and lens modules are almost identical. This makes the comparison between the two sensors more representative. A and D are completely different. Both brands use the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 Leading Edition. Device A has a focal length of 85 mm. It can shoot from a bit farther away. Device D uses a multi-prism reflective lens structure, similar to the iPhone Pro series. The module and deco can be made smaller and thinner, but it can't do macro shots. Also, with more light reflections in the optical path, there will be some light loss, which theoretically could affect image quality. What about the two sensors? On paper, aside from the size, the specs and performance of the Elite 600 are indeed a bit better than the OV64B. The circuit layer manufacturing process is more advanced and energy efficient, and the readout speed is also faster. It also features a full pixel 2x2 OC and single micro lens design, which enables full pixel phase detection. In plain terms, this means faster and more accurate focusing, which is especially beneficial for low light autofocus. However, precisely because of this technology, a single micro lens is bound to four pixels at once. So when the LY600 is used for telephoto and then cropped and enlarged, there may be some loss in image quality. Here to control variables, we use the same brands B and C models, zoomed in to 10 times to take sample shots. If you don't zoom in, you can't really see any difference in image quality. There are also traces of algorithmic processing in both, but if you really want to nitpick, you can see that the OB64B, which is the small b, does have a bit more texture and detail. This does to some extent illustrate the issue with digital zoom on the LYT600, but honestly, zooming in this close and enlarging the image this much feels a bit like nitpicking for the sake of it. After all, it's just smartphone photography, there's no need to be this critical. The OV64B uses 2KX2 on-chip AML phase detection for local pixels, so its autofocus in low light isn't slow. But compared to the LYT600, it falls short. Differences in manufacturing, power consumption, and readout speed can lead to standby performance gaps. In theory, 2020 tech should have caught up to 2023 by now. Here are objective test results from our lab for four telephoto sensors. Why such a big performance difference with the same sensor? 
We'll discuss the reasons later. Let's first look at some sample photos taken at the native focal lengths. Things like color are related to algorithms and stylistic choices. When it comes to image quality, we're mainly focusing on detail resolution and dynamic range in highlights and shadows. Honestly, if you don't zoom in on samples A, B, C, and D, aside from color style, I can't see any difference. So we have to zoom in to find the differences. During the day, let's look at the faux fur on the sheep statue in the plaza. The texture of the tactile paving by the roadside, the red tower in the woods, the canopy of the pedestrian overpass in the distance at 600 millimeter native focal length, all of them are a bit better than the OV64B. Even with models from the same brand, the details at 600 millimeters are only slightly better than the OV6C. Not a bit more. Moreover, even with the same sensor, different lens assemblies and algorithms can produce completely different results. For example, here they're all OVB and little a. Although the new one is impressive, its detail still isn't as good as last year's little b. The main issue is that the algorithm isn't mature enough, and there's hardly any noise reduction algorithm. While the sharpening in the output is minimal, there's a heavy smudging effect, a lot of noise, and the image quality is quite raw. In low light night scenes, if you don't zoom in, you still can't really tell the difference. But if you do zoom in, they're all a bit blurry. If you have to pick a winner, the little C from the Light 600 does a bit better. Not by much though. For example, along the lakeshore by the bridge here, its details are a bit richer, and you can also see the small cars in the roadside parking spaces, and the little yellow bike next to the bus stop. The little C captures a bit more detail here. But if you look closely, you'll notice that even though it's also a light 600 model, the little brother actually comes in last in terms of image quality this time. The reason is simple. It's held back by the multi-prism reflection structure I mentioned earlier. This lowers the baseline for the entire telephoto performance. With less light reaching the sensor, shooting night scenes becomes even more challenging. When you zoom in on these areas, it's like my nearsightedness has gotten worse. The image quality is even worse than the little A's OV64B. So, as I said before, even with the same sensor, what drags down the image quality could be the algorithm, or it could be the optical module. This is why lab test results for the same sensor can vary so much between different devices. The baseline directly affects the overall level of the entire imaging system. Going back to the question at the beginning of the video, I don't think the OV64B is outdated in terms of performance. It's just that there are now better options available upstream in the supply chain. Overall, when compared, the comprehensive image quality of the l 600 is indeed better. The difference isn't huge, but you'd need a magnifying glass to spot it. The initial surge in popularity of the OV64B periscope telephoto was the inevitable result of its just right specs and performance combined with a sufficiently low cost. Now that the l 600 has taken the lead, the OV64B, as a sensor that was introduced five years ago, really should retire. Secondly, with almost identical product specs, the l 600 has achieved just the right performance improvements while keeping hardware costs low enough, so it's only natural that the supply chain is intentionally replacing the OV64B. However, when it comes to imaging as a whole, you can't just look at the sensor that determines the upper limit. You also have to consider the lower limit. That is, you have to take into account the ISP, image signal processor, the algorithms, and the quality of the optical module. Just look at Xiao and Xiaodi, they're perfect examples, aren't they? So have you guessed which phones A, B, C, and D are? All right, that's all for this video. For more data, don't forget to check out our wildlife mini program with the same name. If you found this helpful, feel free to follow, like, save, and share. This is YLab and I'm Shia Ran. See you in the next episode.